This is the Paris 1900 City of Entertainment special exhibit that I visited at the Cincinnati Art Museum and luckily they allowed photography, the number one sign of a good special exhibit. These are wax models of some of Edgar Degas famed dancer sculptures that were done after his death. The City of Light in one of my favorite places that I've ever been to has remained perhaps the global center of art and entertainment. But it's been that way for quite a while. The advances in art, fashion, technology, and entertainment grew here under the Third Republic after the Franco-Prussian War and were showcased at the International Exposition in 1900 to prove itself the capital of the art world. This painting is of Le Prix Catalan, a fancy restaurant that opened at the Bois de Boulogne in 1905 and this was painted in 1909. The subject of this painting may be Marcel Legay, one of the most popular cabaret singers in Mamar. Pardon my French, I've taken four years and I still suck at it. The Expulsion of Maxims. This artist, who is known as Sem, made humorous prints and art about Paris's excesses. Antoine Bordel's Coulin the Younger. The Coquelin brothers were some of the most popular actors in Paris before the Belle Epoque. This dress was worn by Sarah Bernhardt, considered the divine tragedienne, and she wore very luxurious clothing. She also sculpted this gilded and bronze seaweed sculpture. Sculpture was her self-taught second vocation. This gelatin silver print shows Bernhardt as Thisbe and Angelo, Tyrant of Padua, which was written by Victor Hugo. Jean Bureau's Nighttime on Boulevard Montmartre from 1885. The Montmartre district at this time had lots of performances for every social class nightly. This shows Constant Courlin in the role of Cyrano de Bergerac in 1901, a Grand Prix evening à la Pavilion d'Armenonville, which was a horse race for the elite. The Ladies of the Night at the Jardin de Paris from 1905. This is a bust of Victorian Sardou by Sarah Bernhardt, and he was one of her close friends, and he wrote some of her most memorable roles. Most of the works here are from some major museums in Paris, like the Petit Palais, Musée de Beaux-Arts, and the Musée Carnavale. Henri Gervex's soiree on a Tuesday at Madeleine Le Maire's. She owned a high-class salon for meetings of the Paris aristocracy. The Gaumont Palais Cinema at Place de Clichy. Just a decade or two after our film was pretty much invented in Paris, it took over the Paris theater scene. Here's the iconic red windmill of the Moulin Rouge, which opened in 1889 as a place to show scantily clad and nude dancers. A quadrille at the Bal Terrebin, which was a cabaret at the foot of Montmartre that opened in 1904. A lithograph by the artist who probably best captured this aspect of Paris history and culture, Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec. It's of a dress rehearsal at the Fouls Bruguere in 1893. Toulouse-Lautrec also made this colored lithograph poster for the Divan Japonais. He made this for the manager of the short-lived Café Concert. A real poster for the Chat Noir. This is a symbol of this era in Paris. Le Chat Noir was one of the most famous cabaret clubs in Mamar. In its heyday, it was a bustling nightclub also considered the first modern cabaret, and it also included an art salon and a music hall. A program from the Chat Noir from around 1900. The stained glass is actually from the Chat Noir. The owner commissioned this for the new location in 1885 and it's called the Golden Calf, which inverts the Old Testament story about the Israelites worshipping a golden calf, and it instead mocks his patrons. Othon Frise's Fall in Enfleur from 1906, he was part of the Autumn Salon, which was against the conservative policies of the Paris Salon. Jean Metzinger's Colored Landscape with Aquatic Birds, Seems like a mix of Impressionism and Fauvism. A view of the Jardin de Luxembourg by Maurice Mernot. Storming Clouds by Raoul Larche. Camille Pissarro's Pont Royal and the Pavilion de Fleur from 1903. 
Henry Moray's Fine Weather at Pern. He worked in Brittany with Paul Gauguin. This is a marble sculpture by Auguste Rodin of Cupid and Psyche, one of his many sculptures of young mortals who captivate the god of love. Pierre Bernard's lithograph called Some Aspects of Life in Paris. Luz Lautrec's cover from Le Stamp, Original, 1893. He was an illustrator as well as a painter and printmaker, and he designed the cover for this journal. Motherhood by Eugene Carrier. Portrait of Marie Cassatt by Jacques-Emile Blanche. The guy who painted this went on to become Paris's most sought after portraitist. A bust of Rodin by Camille Claudel. She met him at age 18, trained as a sculptor under him, and then she became his pupil and mistress. A bust of the Russian prince, about to butcher this, Meshursky. This is one of Toulouse-Lautrec's last paintings of poet and playwright André Rivoire from 1901. On the right is a portrait of Madame de Bonnières by Pierre-Auguste Renoir. Bertha Morso's Portrait of a Young Girl. And I think she is definitely the forgotten impressionist. A Bust of a Laborer by Jules de Lou. The big event for Paris was the 1900 Exposition Universelle, and this painting is an allegory of the city of Paris symbolized by a young woman sailing down the Seine. Several details of the city can be seen, like Notre Dame and the Hotel de Ville. Of course, the Eiffel Tower was built for the International Exposition of 1889, marking the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution, and this was painted in 1889, making it one of the earliest paintings, including the Eiffel Tower. This depicts nighttime festivities at the Elysee Palace in 1905. A panorama of the tracks at the Gare du Nord, and the silhouette of Sacré-Cœur and Montmartre can be seen in the distance. These are paintings from a lavish restaurant that was at the Gare de Lyon from 1895 to 1901. These show construction of the Metro system, which started in 1898 and the first line opened in 1900. This painting shows the Statue of Liberty under construction in 1884 at the workshop of the Gage Foundry. This is an original labor freeze model for the 1900 exposition's monumental gate at the Place de la Concorde. And this is an illustration for the Porte Monumentale, which was one of the largest and most flamboyant buildings erected for the exposition. Some illustrations of the exposition's awesome exhibit halls for the Petit Journal. Some real souvenirs from the exposition. If I could go back in time, one of the first places I would go would be these great world's fairs and expositions during the Victorian era. This shows the theater of the cheerful authors, which was a park along the Seine designated for entertainment at the exposition. Some original sketches by architect Charles Gouraud for the central dome of the Petit Palais. The painting shows the construction of the Grand Palais and Petit Palais. A painting of the very ornate 1896 Pont Alexander III. And the actual terracotta lion models used for sculpting the real ones that are still there. Art Nouveau was also becoming very popular in Paris around the turn of the century, and this is a furniture set by Henri Sauvage from the Carnavale. A 
a weird frog with rabbit ears from 1892. The French also have cryptids, I guess. That's cool. These were for the facade of the Fouquet jewelry shop on Rue Royale. Some dresses and fashion features of Parisian women. Paris was the fashion capital at that time and arguably still is. Never seen so many Toulouse Lautrecs in one place. This is the milliner Rene Vert. This is by Alfred Smith called After the Races at Autuil. These are mosaics from Le Café Riche, which was frequented by people like Emile Zola. There were a lot of great Art Nouveau examples in this exhibit. A poster of Loire Fuller in Salome. She was an American dancer who was very successful in the 1890s. A scale model of a Paris tram from 1900. A model of the Lavasseur monuments by Jules Delu. Emile Lavasseur, who some believe invented the gasoline powered car, that's very controversial, was the first place winner of the Paris Bordeaux Paris Motor Race. Jacques Emile Blanche's Mademoiselle Morio on her pony. Riders and carriages on Avenue de Bois at the Arc de Triomphe, and some posters for Paris recreational opportunities. This one's cool, it's for the Niagara Falls log flume ride that was on the Champs-Elysees built in 1884. Man, I wish that was still there. That was one of the best traveling exhibits I've ever been to, and now I really want to go back to Paris. So as I said, the Art Museum is in Eden Park, which is a really cool and historic urban park. Um, eventually I'd like to like do a more in-depth tour because there's a lot of cool architecture. Um, there's an old conservatory that's over 100 years old, so it's uh, definitely worth uh, coming back to. But I did want to see one thing while I was here. This is the statue of Romulus and Remus. Um, and this is a famous Roman sculpture. Uh, the real thing is in the Capitoline Museum in uh, Rome, which I will hopefully get to go there in my life. I don't know when. And it shows a wolf nursing two uh, very small children. Um, kind of weird, if you don't know the background story, which is also very weird. So this is the story of how the city of Rome was founded. So these were two her brothers, Remus and Romulus. I always mix up their names and think it's something else. Um, but their grandfather was like killed. He was the king of like the area in uh, whatever Italian province. You know, this is before Roman Empire, I guess. Um, by their evil uncle, and they got sent away, and they were uh, expected to die. But on um, this ner this wolf save them from starvation and raise the two brothers. Here's a plaque, it says, the twins learned their true identity, forced their uncle from the throne and reinstate their grandfather, and uh, they built the new capital city, Rome, which is in the valley where they were found. Nom 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 nom. I don't know, this is such a weird origin story for the city of Rome. So you know, that's cool and all, but the reason I wanted to show this especially is um, because uh, it has an interesting history that the plaque omits. Um, this sculpture was donated to the city of Cincinnati by none other than the fascist leader Benito Mussolini. As you can see on the block it says, basically from the government of Rome to the city of Cincinnati in 1931. So uh, Mussolini was well in place at that point, had started the fascist party in Italy. I don't know why he donated these in 1931, but uh, he donated three uh, replicas, one to Rome, New York, one to Rome, Georgia. I think you can still see both. Um, and this one they gave to Cincinnati because Cincinnati is named after uh, Cincinnatus, who was a famed Roman politician. And uh, also, uh, Cincinnati is built on seven hills, 
just like Rome is, and uh, we're on one of those hills right now, Mount Adams. So yeah, that's the uh, hidden history of the fascist monuments in Eden Park. Thanks, Mussolini. Yeah, look at that turret building. But yeah, Eden Park is definitely worth a more thorough uh, experience and video. So um, I'll plan to do that in the future when I'm in Cincinnati. There's a duck. Okay, I can't help but show a few more things. Um, this is an old monument. Uh, it's a Battery F, the 136th Field Infantry from World War One. Okay, this park is freaking awesome. This is cool, look at this limestone, or whatever. I think this is pretty eroded, based on the roots. So that Paris exhibit was really cool and uh, got the little snippet of Eden Park that I saw. And uh, if you like this video, make sure to check out my uh, main Cincinnati Art Museum video that shows the main permanent exhibits, which are equally as amazing. Um, and also check out uh, my uh, other videos. I go to museums, roadside attractions, art museums. Um, so I'd appreciate if you check that out. Uh, and anyways, thanks for watching. Now that is a rape fan if I've ever seen one.